In this video, I'm going to go over some basic editing techniques. Um, I don't want to get too complicated at first. I really want to cover some commonly used modules that you're going to see me use over and over again. And these aren't just ones that I use for outdoor portraits. Um, I'm going to use these in different sets of images. Um, so I'm not going to get into any complex modules like the equalizer tool or parametric masks. Not at first anyway. I'm actually going to make a second part to this video where I get a little more detailed in the edit. But for now, um, I really want to focus on the basics. And uh, looking at this image here, I'll, I'll zoom out again. And if you haven't already done so, uh, you can download this raw image and you can follow along, uh, which I'm sure is very helpful for a lot of people. Uh, the first thing I want to do, I'm just going to come up to the basic group. I'm going to go to crop and rotate. And the reason I'm cropping it first is I want to do a nice easy comparison later on uh, before and after. Um, so on the angle here, um, I can hover my mouse wheel over and move it up or down to rotate the image. I'm going to rotate it to, I will say about there. And I want to get rid of this uh, thing in the top left here. So I'm going to come to the top and just click and drag and, and bring it down a little bit. And I'll double click to about here. Now the crop is really um, personal preference. If you want to do something differently, um, for example, I have the rule of thirds uh, guides on right now. And you can see the one line goes right over her eye that's furthest away from the camera. If you want to click and drag and make sure it's on the eye that's closer to the camera, um, that's obviously up to you. You could do that crop. Uh, just for me, because the model's looking out away, uh, like outside the image, I want to add, uh, I want to leave more of the image here, almost like she has more of something to look at. So I'm just going to go back one step and, and leave it about there. Uh, but it's really up to you. And uh, looking at this image here, um, I'll zoom in a little bit. So these photos, they're taken on a cloudy day outside. Well, actually, the sun was coming in and out. And I was either, you can see here, I'm beside a building. So I'm in the shade outside of the, the strong sunlight. Um, so that leaves things flat, right? There's no harsh shadows. Um, you can see a little bit of shape and shadow on her face here. And if I zoom in, you can see these white parts in the middle of her eye. And that's a reflection um, from a reflector I have somebody holding off camera. And uh, that adds that nice, there's a little bit more brighter highlights on like the forehead, the nose, the top of the cheeks, and so on. Uh, that brings a lot more shape to the face, uh, which I'm happy with. Um, but I am going to go and I want to fix the, the tonality, the luminance, the brightness of the photo. And we can do that here in our basic group. Um, but I'm going to use a different method. I want to look at something here quickly first. Um, so the exposure module is a great place to start. And um, as you may be aware here at the top, uh, we have the histogram. And that white part of the image, that's kind of the brightness uh, of the histogram here. And normally you want to touch into the left so you get a black point. The shadows here are on the left and the highlights are here on the right. And we want to bring those so they're touching the edge. So if I'm in the exposure module and I start increasing the blacks, you're going to see that move to the edge. You could see here's a before, here's an after. And if I want to make it brighter, bring up those highlights, I can click on the exposure and I can start increasing that. And the more I increase the exposure, the more the histogram moves to the right. So that's great. That's a great tool to adjust the exposure and make those changes. Um, but I'm actually just going to reset it and turn it off. I'm going to move over to the tone group and I'm going to use the levels module. If you've ever used Photoshop or GIMP, uh, you might be familiar with this module. I'm going to show you it can actually function the same or in a very similar way um, as the exposure module with one extra feature. So here on the left is the shadows, on the right is the highlights. And if I come over here and hover over the shadows and start mo moving my mouse wheel up, I'm going to start increasing those shadows. Here's before, here's after, the histogram moved to the left. So that's just like the black slider on the exposure. In the highlights, if I start bringing that to the left, the photo gets brighter and the histogram starts moving to the right. Now the difference between this and the exposure module is I have a third option here, the midtones. So I can increase or decrease the midtones and kind of adjust how sharply it, it drops off from the shadows and not, whatnot. And I like that. I like that third option there. Uh, so that's why you're probably going to see me using the levels uh, more than I use the exposure. So I'm just going to reset it so I can start from the beginning. And down at the bottom here towards the right, you have a, an exposure warning I'm going to turn on. So that's going to give me warnings about parts of the image that are overexposed or underexposed. So right now you can see the highlights there. Um, there's some sunlight coming in from the trees in the background. It's going to tell me that we're there's no detail there uh, when it's the red like that. Uh, so again, I'm going to zoom in here and uh, I'm just going to keep an eye on the image here while I start making adjustments. I'm going to start here on the highlights and I'm going to increase them and increase them. I'll keep going. And once you'll see here, you start seeing those exposure warnings showing up on the face. Like if I keep going higher, I'm going to back off uh, when I start seeing those. 
and I want it to pop a little more. You want the contrast, so I'm going to increase those shadows. So I'll start bringing those up, and maybe I'll just go to about here. Um, it's okay if a little bit of blue starts showing up. Um, like in the shadows, you know, there's certain parts where you want to lose detail. Um, it, it just shows that you have an actual black point uh, in the photo. Now I also have that mid-tone slider, so I'm going to increase that a little bit, keep going. And this is really just going off my own personal judgment. Uh, there isn't like a magic hard set rule that you look in the histogram and know exactly where to put it. You just play around with it and find what you like. So when I'm done with the levels, I'm just going to go down to this module here, the tone curve uh, below it. I'm going to turn it on, and when I click on this eyedropper tool here, it's going to give me this little grid, this little reference point. And wherever I put that in the photo, it's going to give me a line in the tone curve so I know where that's represented. So here, like in the bottom left, these are my shadows. Top right is the highlights, and in the middle you have the range of the midtones. So it's a little bit like the levels, but instead of having three uh, sliders to work with, uh, you can add nodes and click and work with as many as you want. Uh, well, I think there's a limit, maybe 20 or something. Uh, but I'm going to use this reference grid here, and I'm just going to put it on the shadow side of her face. And that's going to give me this line here, so I can kind of get an idea of where I need to add a node. So I'm going to click and drag up a little bit. It's going to add a node. And then with my mouse wheel over top of that node, I'm just going to move it up just a little bit, a little bit at a time, and I can, I can really fine tune it. And you can start seeing those exposure warnings showing up, so I'm going to leave it about there. I'm going to come up to the hair here, and I'm going to get a kind of a reference point of the shadows in there. Um, so if I wanted it darker, I could come down here. If I want a bit brighter, um, but I'm going to go I'll try right about here. And I'm going to click and drag down just a little bit, just enough for a node to show up. And then I'm going to use my mouse wheel again, because you can really fine tune it with the mouse wheel. And I love that. I love those subtle, adju uh, subtle adjustments on the tone curve. So I'm just going to uh, go, here's a before the tone curve, here's an after. I think that makes the image pop a lot more, which I'm quite happy with. Now before I move on to other modules, I've already made a levels one, but I actually want this image to be a little bit brighter. And I mentioned before that we're getting these overexposure warnings. Um, sometimes I ignore that for personal preference. When I look at the histogram here, um, I see this part, this white part of the histogram. I almost want that touching to the right but I don't want to start losing detail in the highlights. So I'm going to increase this more and more and more, and I can see those warnings. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in on the face to 100%, and I'm just going to turn off the exposure warnings for a sec, and I'm just going to see. So for me right now, I can still see the detail in the skin, and I'm okay with that. I understand if you really want to play by the book, and you see that overexposure warning, and you think, no, back off, that's totally up to you. For me, I want this image to pop a little more, uh, so that's why I'm bringing in this, uh, this extra step here in, in the levels. Now, if I want to bring in more contrast, I have that option again. Uh, sometimes it's just nice to do a, increase the highlights a little bit, increase the shadows to uh, bring up the contrast. So I'm going to go, well, yeah, I'll go to about here. And I do have that mid-tones again if I want. Uh, so here's before uh, my second levels, and here's after. And that's much more what I'm looking for. I'm much happier with that there. I'll zoom out and just kind of take a look at, uh, here's from the crop point, here's uh, before, here's after. Big changes already, um, just with using uh, the levels in the tone curve. Um, now I want to adjust the, the color just a little bit. Now the, the color is pretty good as it is here, right? We're in shade, I've got a nice camera, we're not using some fluorescent lights, this is some nice natural light. But for me there is a little bit too much green, a little bit too much uh, yellow. And I'm kind of looking at this neutral wall and her gray shirt and just kind of using that as a reference. Um, so I've come over to the basic group and I've gone down to white balance. And I'm just looking at the temperature and tint sliders. These are the ones I'm going to work with. Temperature, if I bring it to the left, I'm going to increase the blues, taking away some of the yellow. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'll maybe go to about here. Now the tint, you want to be really subtle with. Like right now, it's what, uh, 1.002. I'm not going to adjust this much at all. I just want it down a little bit. I want to take away a little bit of that green. So I'm going to move it to the left a little bit to bring up the magenta. And yeah, you really want to be subtle with the uh, the tint adjustments. So that might not look like a lot to you, and it, it probably isn't. I'm just going to go, here's a before, here's an after. And I prefer that because the color is getting more accurate, particularly, again, you can see it in that neutral area. Now. There is a nice yellow cast in it, right? She, it's a person, skin tones, uh, yellows and reds, they're flattering for skin tones. So I understand if you want to keep it that way. 
I'm going to shortly add some saturation and that'll bring a bit of that back. So that's that's my color correction, very subtle, um, but I always like to take care of that. Your exposure, move on to the color. And from here, I'm in the basic group already. So I'm going to go up a little bit higher to the, the shadows and highlights module. So I'm going to turn it on and by default, it's going to be pretty strong. Um, so I'm just going to turn it on and see what it does. So that's a bit too much for me. Um, but I do like the way it brought up uh, the shadows and the hair and the face and so on. So I'm going I'm to bring it down by half here. So right now the highlights are minus 50. I'm going to go to minus 25. And the shadows, instead of 25, I'm just, or instead of 50, I'm going to go to 25. Look at it before. Here's an after. Okay, I, I'm happier with it like that. Now I already added contrast in the tone group. Um, you could look at the contrast, brightness, and saturation module if you want. Um, and maybe you could increase the contrast here a little bit. Um, I'm just going to take a look and see if I like it or not. Um, yeah, we'll go, here's a before, here's an after. Yeah, I guess I'm okay with that. Uh, it does lose a little bit in the mid-tones. Maybe I'll just go down a, a touch or something here. Uh, so I think that's it for my basic group. You know, um, the exposure I didn't use, it was just white balance, shadows and highlights, and a touch of contrast here. The last thing I want to do, I want to add some saturation. And I'm going to come over to the color group. And I'm going to go to the color correction module. And I'm not actually going to correct any of the colors. I'm just going to hover my mouse wheel over the middle part here and move it up to increase the saturation. And you can see here down at the bottom, the saturation, it went from 1.00 to 1.10 with one mouse wheel over the middle. If I hover my mouse wheel over the middle again, it'll increase it by another 0.10. So I usually just start at zero and I move my mouse wheel up once and I go, is that enough? Maybe I want a little more. I go my mouse wheel up again. And as soon as I see, I think, oh, this is too much. I back off and go down one. And then if I want to do a little more subtle adjustment, I'll click down here and just increase it a little bit like that. Um, so I think I'm happy with it there. I'll go before, after. I'm going to zoom out and just take a look at our image uh, from when we opened it and recropped it to now. Uh, big change, big adjustment there. And these are with really basic modules. We haven't even dived into any masks yet. Um, there haven't, we haven't been using the equalizer tool or anything. And I'm just going to take a snapshot here, turn it on, and go back to the crop and rotate. So when we start off, it's actually it's very flat. It's quite muddy there, right? Uh, there's not much contrast. Uh, the tonality's a little weak, a little flat. And now we have it brighter. We've got some saturation in there, uh, a really big difference. So that's really how I approach a lot of photos. I mean, it's going to obviously vary from image to image, but I generally start off and I look at the, the exposure, I move on to the color, and then I start tweaking it from there on. Uh, but download the image yourself and start editing away. I'm actually going to move on to just a few more extra steps in this, and um, that's for a follow-up video. Uh, but for now, just the basics have been covered.